Hey, Soul Pancakers, how you doing? Rain Wilson here. As you know, mostly on Mondays, we have Metaphysical Mondays, and we have celebrities sharing their thoughts on life's big questions. But today, it's a different kind of celebrity, a very special event. I want you to meet an extremely courageous, inspirational, and kick-ass young man named Shane Burkle. He is hysterical. He's funny, smart, brave, amazing, and this, this story is going to blow your mind. The video is a little bit long, so stick with it to the end. You'll be glad that you took the journey. Please meet Shane Burkhoff. First tattoo? It's my first. first. Yeah. How long is it? An elephant on my okay, yeah. <laughs> You want a woolly, woolly male? A woolly male, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Mm -hmm. Alright. That's awesome, Shane. It's the symbol of our favorite band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Right? Or do you just want to keep looking at it? Forever. Yeah. <laughs> Stare at it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a great night, man. You too, buddy. I'm in for school. My name is Shane Berha, and I have a disease called spinal muscular atrophy, uh, which is a form of muscular dystrophy that, in basic terms, causes my muscles to deteriorate as I get older. Most people with my disease die sometime between like 20 and 30, is like a rough estimate. My parents noticed it when I was really young because it wasn't progressing uh, physically the way other kids were. Um, so where other kids were starting to crawl and reach for things, I was happy to just sit in one spot and hang out there for the day. I rely on other people to help me with pretty much anything, from picking things up to going to the bathroom, anything that an able-bodied person uh, does really without thinking about. What that means today is that all my muscles are extremely weak, except for my penis. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. <laughs> Shane is a, uh, is an inspiration. Daily inspiration for me. Funny, intelligent, sarcastic to the core, and uh, a magnet. I envy him, you know, his capacity to make friends and uh, to understand people and institute change is an incredible thing for a, a kid his age, let alone his disability. If I lose my mind, I'll remember that moment. We had a diagnosis from a pediatric neurologist who said spinal muscular atrophy was his diagnosis. One of the characteristics, there is no electrical activity firing across the muscle synapses. I asked, like any parent would, Doc, is he, is he gonna ever walk? And the doc said, no, probably not. And after that, it was just kind of uh, white noise. That evening, put Shane to sleep and uh, the brevity of the day kind of came down on us. It was like standing on the edge of an abyss and you could look down and let it suck you in or look up and rise above it. I think uh, looking at Shane, you can see what choice we made. Can someone push my head up? Thank you. Or someone in the back. Thank you. I, I have really weak neck muscles. It's difficult to hold my head up on like hills or like fast start and stop. 
found his blog just randomly and decided to email him. <laughs> yeah, I just thought that we would be good friends in real life. I so, yeah, you know the last <laughs> one. It's been wonderful ever since. <laughs> I'm Pat Hess. <laughs> I'm one of Shane's best friends, one of his longest friends. Well, it's rare when I don't see him or talk to him every day. I always see him at school. He always, we always text, try and hang out, play FIFA. You're Manchester United? They're following friends. Son of a bitch! <laughs> a penalty, you have one shot, one shot. We have the exact same sense of humor and can never be in a bad mood with each other. It's just always a good laughing mood. I am Shane's older cousin. There was never a point in time when, and, you know, the parents were like, Shane's handicapped or anything like that. Like, we would always figure out a way to have Shane there and do stuff with us. He never saw it as like, oh, there's something wrong with me. I'm never going to be normal because we wouldn't let him because he was normal. He was just like all of us. In fact, probably way more intelligent than all of us, too. We laugh pretty much whenever we're together there's a joke being cracked or just a reference being made that we find funny. We just like to focus on like having fun, the moment we're in right now, focus on that. Our problems will figure it out later. I feel you'll find with all my friends that we're all very good at making fun of each other and ourselves. We all have that ability to laugh at ourselves because you have to have that, I feel. I think my sense of humor probably came from my dad. And the reason I say that is I've had it pretty much my whole life. Well, let's see, there's breathing, sex, and laughter. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> oh, man. Laughing is uh, part of me. It's part of my family. Laughing at ourselves, laughing at each other. That's just part of the day, man. It's, uh, it's what gets us through. You're out in Does public. Look at you out and about. Go. Big boy. Yeah. Big boy. I think in my case, what I've lost in like physical abilities, I've made up for in my wit. And it sounds so self-loving, but whatever. Wait, I'm a really good limp. If I had to deal with my life and my situation without humor, uh, I would be in a very different place. I've heard before that humor is a common mechanism, and it's kind of said in like a, a negative connotation. Like, oh, you're just hoping. But fuck it, yeah, it's a coping mechanism. Who cares? His look at everything is amazing. I don't know how he does it. I try and have the same attitude, even though it's not even on close to the same level. He never looks like something's bothering him. It's, it's amazing. And I just try and be like him, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Recently, my jaw muscles have started getting like weaker, so chewing is more difficult, and that's why I don't eat like the outside of the burrito because it's chewy. I mean, I would spend like 20 minutes chewing one bite. There are parts of everyone's life that truly just blow, and it's about how you react to that, which defines the quality of your life. I don't use humor to avoid thinking about the bad stuff in life. I use it to make the bad stuff less bad.
don't know what I would do without my family and the support system that they offer. They're all so much there for me. And from a very young age, my parents taught me that, yeah, your life is going to be different. You're not gonna have it as easy as some other people might, but life is what you make of it, and you can be happy or you can be sad. You do what you gotta do when you, when you have kids. Um, you raise them above your shoulders, and in Shane's case, uh, it just takes a little more lifting to get him up. <laughs> Taking care of him basically just came second nature from like the day I was born, and like I don't even think about doing the stuff I do anymore. It kind of just comes, he comes first, and then I'll take care of myself, and I don't really like think that. I just do that. We're blessed uh, with two amazing kids. Shane is the brains and Andrew is the brawn. The, the two of them together are uh, an amazing pair. I heard my brother and my mom talking once about what Andrew wanted to do for college. And Andrew said something like, well, I don't really want to go away because I want to stay here and help out with Shane. I really thought that was more important than like doing what I want to do and like go live my life. And it was certainly a hard decision to make, but I f eventually came to the conclusion that it's not like I'd be leaving forever. I could come home on holidays, weekends, but it was certainly probably one of the hardest decisions I had to make. And I think that says a lot about who my brother is. Okay, Jesse, keep it there. There. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as long as I have the ability to laugh at the shit that's happening to me, it's a lot easier to deal with. I'll never say that, like, I wouldn't want to walk if I had the hypothetical possibility. I know there are some people who are in wheelchairs who say, no, my wheelchair is a part of who I am, and I wouldn't give it up for anything. I think. That's kind of bullshit a little bit. Cause I mean, I would fucking love to be able to walk and run and skateboard and surf and do cool shit. As long as being able to do that didn't change me as a person. Like I wouldn't give up who I am to do that. I do. Michaela Levin. Many of my friends take weekend trips to the beach whenever they get back. I hear all the stories about how they met up with these girls that they didn't know and had a great time, and like that's something that I've never been able to do. A girl will never come up to me and be like, hey, what's up, we should hang out, in the same way that they would with my friends. Most girls my age are going to look at me and kind of not be turned on. And so any chance of like developing a relationship with them is going to stop there. Someday, I'm going to find a girl that doesn't care about the challenges that we'll face together and who will just make things work. But it's, uh, that's what it's all about. Wiggies. <laughs>I started a blog called Laughing at the Nightmare. I really only meant it to be a place where I could write some of the funny stories that happened in my life, just to make people laugh. I posted a few stories. A couple days later, I had like 100 followers. Over time, my blog kind of evolved into this place where I document everything that's different about my life because of my disability. Um, but also everything that's normal about my life. And today I have over 170,000 followers, all because I told some funny stories, so. Stuff that he's learned by being a part of this huge blog community is just absolutely incredible. Hell, I didn't even know what a blog was when, when he started blogging. I hope that he reaches a billion people. 
Shane recognized first that he really had the ability to do something with it, and what it came down to was creating a nonprofit. And what the nonprofit is, is we're raising money for muscular dystrophy research. We promote a message of positivity with the simple message of laugh and show how it's possible to live your life in a way that you might have not thought of doing before. important in laughing. It's infinite. The reality of his situation is that his disease isn't allowing him to live out a full life, and it's just not fair to me, but it's most likely not gonna be a good, happy ending here. I don't think about it, because I can't. I can't physically do it. <laughs> The most I think about that is when I'm like in bed at night, if my mind starts like running, sometimes I'll think about it, but then it'll just like hit me, his whole message like, just take what you have and live it to the fullest. In the future, I'm going to be physically worse off than I am now. And I have this recurring fear, nightmare if you will, where my family is sitting down to like eat Christmas dinner and like, 30 years, and I'm not there. I think that is the most difficult thing. <laughs> I'm not crying. Just, <laughs> just while you realize. <laughs> there is contest, ready? As watering is happening. I have the sun in my eye. <laughs> That's true. That kid has every reason in the world to wake up every morning fucking hating his life. But goddammit, he hates his life the least out of anybody in the world. My future inspires me to treat every day like it's my last, and that's cliche. But when you live with it, it's not cliche. On your marks, get set, go! As far as uh, time left, um, there's too much time to go. Dwelling on that, uh, in my opinion, is letting it beat you. There's just no time for that. I think that the world and the people in it and the universe is just so mind-bogglingly amazing that something has to be up. Like, it's not just the laws of science. However, I can't also say that I firmly believe in God. At this point in my life, it's kind of like a, I'm still asking questions. I don't firmly believe one way or another. I believe in God, and I believe that heaven is a baseball field where Shane is running, catching a ball, playing with Andrew. I believe that heaven is unconscionable love I don't want to go a day without Shane. I'm just one of the few victims that he's changed in a very positive way. He's just amazing, and I'm so honored and blessed to even have met him. Is there uh, anything you haven't said to your brother that you would want to tell him? Thank you for making me the person I am today. I think time is such an important thing that people don't realize of how, how little of it that we actually have. And somebody who has such a limited amount of time, he can, he can be like this. It's like, what can you do? Like, what can you really do in your life? We all have problems in life. 
Some of them are big, some of them are small. But the quality of your life is really dependent upon how you react to those problems. And so my dream is to reach as many people as possible and to laugh with them and to teach as many people uh, the way that I live my life. If you just truly take time to laugh at yourself and at your problems and at the craziness of the world around you, you're gonna have a better time. And I think when it comes down to it, life is about having a good time, so do that. <laughs>